The world is changing in some pretty incredible ways, and that includes the way we define wealth. I believe that by preserving our heritage, I can create wealth for the future generation. So I'm scouring Singapore to see how people are redefining what makes a truly rich life. Nikki, be patient and enjoy the process of building memories. Today, I'm meeting David, a custodian of heritage who sees a priceless kind of wealth in the memorabilia he collects. Oh, David, I think I found it. I'm Nikki Mueller, and in my quest to meet interesting people with unique perspectives on wealth, I'm meeting David Wee, who has dedicated his life to becoming a custodian of Singapore's priceless heritage. David was comfortable working in the civil service, organizing events for the community, but he wanted a change and decided to pursue his lifelong passion of collecting heritage pieces. Now he runs his own private museum. Hi, Nikki. How have you been? I am good. Thanks so much for hanging out today. Yeah, I get to be able to see you today. <laughs> hey, listen, they call you the Heritage Collector. Why is that? Well, I've been a collector for close to 25 years now. Now, back in those days, I was following my father to antique stores and to flea markets like Sungai Road. Oh, those are known as the uh, thieves markets. Yes, thieves market. You know why it was called the thieves market? Because, you know, back in those days, uh, if you lose something in the morning, you can actually go there in the evening to buy it back. <laughs> Which probably means at some point in your life, you bought something that was stolen. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. So you're the type of person who measures his wealth in memories. How well, do you do that? Well, I believe in preserving memories. And one of the ways that I do it is actually by building dioramas. What's a diorama? Well, a diorama is actually a mock-up of a set from the 1950s and the 1960s. Ah, okay. Yeah, and would you like to join me and uh, build one? Yeah, sure. What do I need to do? Oh, well, okay, uh, just right. I have a couple of stuff here that I'm looking at the antique store. Oh, you're trying to find these yeah, things? Yeah, I'm trying to find this stuff. Shall we go there together? Hmm, it's a treasure hunt? Yes. Okay, uh, the game is afoot. Okay, let's go. I never thought that I would literally be building memories. But how exactly does David see memories as wealth? I'll have to tag along to find out. Hey, Nikki, this is the vintage store that I always come to look for my treasures and all. Let's see whether we are able to find some things inside here oh, today. Oh, fun! Right, uh, okay, let's start with this one, the frying pan. No, it's not a frying pan. So if this isn't a frying pan, then what is it? It's actually a bread steamer. Okay, but why why do we need these three items? What exactly are we building here? Well, this is actually part of my uh, kopitiam, or we call it coffee shop diorama. It's something that every Singaporean can relate to and actually grew up with. Well, I can tell that this sense of nostalgia is really important to you. So why is that? Why is well preserving memories so important to you? Well, because, you know, Singapore is developing at a very fast pace. You know, a lot of these old items that we see here today are gone. So the fact that I'm able to preserve them, you know, create a diorama, and at the same time, welcome people to my museum to revisit such sets. It would be very interesting. So, okay, so I'm going to look for this yes, non-frying pan non steamer. Pan, yeah, and uh, I will look for the other two items. Okay. So shall we go ahead? Okay, okay. divide and conquer. Singapore's antique shops are treasure troves of artifacts, just like opening an old photo album from decades ago. I can see why David is never tired. Huh. This might be just what I'm looking for. Huh. Oh, David, I think I found it. The pan, uh, the bread steamer. Everything here is like a time capsule. There's certainly a wealth of culture and heritage that's worth preserving. Hey, Nikki, welcome to my gallery, which is also my home. This is incredible. Thank you, thank you. Come in, come in and take a look. There's a lot of different sets over here. Oh my, what is this? This is a Chinese medical hall. It took me about two years to put everything together. Two whole years. Putting together these dioramas was no walk in the park. It takes time and a budget. Things David has willingly invested into these incredible collections. But look at this, it's such a labor of love, all the detail. You know, when uh, I was much younger, our family used to visit Chinese medical halls whenever there's someone ill in the family. It's part of my childhood memory. Look at this, you really have everything. You've got the herbs, you've got these bits, the used to found medicine. Wow! Right. You really? like all this stuff? Yeah! Uh, okay, I can show you more. Yes. Come, let's go take a look at it. 
Hey Nikki, this is my provision shop diorama. <laughs> this all looks so familiar. Yeah, when I was younger, I used to visit the provision store to get my favorite snacks. Yeah, I did that too. Something similar. Sweets and all that, right? Chocolates yeah, yeah. and all that, yeah. Oh, but this I don't recognize. This is actually a cash register. We call it a money tin. Oh, cool. There's a bell here, right? Uh, this is actually uh, the CCTV of yesterday. I see. That's smart. That's very That's clever. Right. And you spent quite a bit of money on your passion. Yeah, about uh, 150 to 200 thousand dollars. Is yes. it worth it? Well, uh, to me, memories are priceless. So, shall we go and complete our mission now? Oh yes, mission Kopitiam. Right, let's go. This is the uh, Kopitiam diorama that I'm in the midst of building up. It's and so impressive already! Yeah, yeah, it's almost there. You know, but we're still short of a couple of items, okay, right? Okay, okay. Alright, okay, so first thing we need is actually the, uh, the bread steamer. The frying pan. Ah, yes. that one, eh? <laughs> I've got your yeah, right. steamer here. So what do you do with this? So you actually place it on top of this hot water boiler. Oh. So you get your hot water from here. The steam comes out, so you actually put the bread and then after that it becomes soft, you put your kaya, your butter, and you serve it to your customers. I love it. And this is the original piece? Yes, this or is the original, original piece, piece that runs on charcoal. Yeah. yeah. And then he also took the, the oven, right? Yes, the one that uh, looks like a safe. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this has got to be a safe. Right, right, right. This is actually a charcoal oven. Yeah, so what happened is in the past, uh, you know, the uh, they will use this to bake their own cakes yes. and uh, bread and so on and so forth. So, so, you know, you actually put the charcoal over here, you stack it up, yep. right? And then you heat it up and then, you know, they will bake cakes and bread. Great! Yes, yes, this fits in just nice at my space over here, which I thought would be good, you know? Okay, and then now down to our the last item that we got, the phone. Uh, yes. The phone. This, I know, is a phone, okay? <laughs> I used to use something similar back in the day. Okay, so this is actually a, a rotary public yes, coin phone, yes. okay? So, well, what happened was uh, back in those days, there was no such thing as a handphone. Okay, there wasn't even a house phone to begin with, right? No because people couldn't afford to have a landline yeah. in the house. So what happened was people would come to the coffee shop, borrow the telephone. So it's for the community, everyone goes yeah, it's there. It's a communal kind of phone. Okay. Okay. But of course you had to pay for it. Uh, yes, correct. This is uh, because you need to make outgoing calls, you have to pay for it. Incoming calls are free. I like that. All uh, right. We still have another final item that we need, right? The uh, coffee tiam table, ah, marble of table. Quintessential coffee tiam. Table. Ah, yes, let's go and get the mm. item. I have it prepared over there. A lot of care is taken into recreating the scenes. I didn't grow up here, but I feel an intimate connection to these settings. I can see why it's important to remember our past. Come, let's carry this to uh, a yes, yes, suitable yes. position. Okay, and, uh, okay, okay, okay. Ah, right. Okay. How fun! Right, okay. <laughs> David, it's been incredible. Thank you. <laughs> I never want to leave. I like it here. I love everything about this. You know, it's your lifestyle. But it's obviously a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of money. So, what do you get out of this? Well, when I first started my gallery, there was a guy who brought his mom here. His mom happened to have dementia, so he brought her here for a tour. And while she was at my gallery, she was speaking a lot, you know, of all the things that she found, all the good memories that she had. You know, and when they left, the son actually thanked me for setting up this gallery because at home, his mom doesn't speak much. To me, to be able to bring back these memories to her, that itself is priceless. That is bigger than me. I like that. So to you, that's true wealth. That's abundance. Definitely. To me, I believe that by preserving our heritage, I'm creating wealth for the future generation. From my time with David, I can see now that wealth isn't just experienced in the present. It goes deeper than that, into our heritage, our cultural identity, our shared experiences, and our memories. To David, wealth is only real, only worth something when it's shared. David's incredible collection of memorabilia evokes memories of bygone days, proving that sometimes the true value of things goes beyond their price tags. Putting together something magical like this takes enormous time and effort. That wouldn't have been possible without financial security and planning. That's where City Gold comes in. The partner you need on your journey to redefine what wealth means to you.